Hello farmers, welcome back to Hinterland. Spent the morning tidying up the farm, putting the tankers away, washing the planter, putting that away, feeding the cows, which is, as we know, is going to be an endless battle going here on forward. Uh, bringing the milk over to the dairy production. Uh, yeah, I still think we're probably going to have to upgrade that maybe a couple more times. I think I'll max out the uh, dairy production somewhere around level 10 before I put down another one and I think we're going to need two. Uh, we'll, we'll just have to see how it keeps up. But what, like I said, we only got like 24 cows currently creating milk and it's it's an issue to deal with later on, I guess, because we just don't have the cash. But at some point when it comes time to sell the butter and the cheese, we'll have a good amount of money from that alone. Uh, plus everything else that's coming along. Uh, first thing we're going to be doing here in this episode anyways is we got to take care of the original grass field that we have. And then of course at the end of the last episode we purchased a new a lot of land which we're going to make into a grass field. Uh, but first things first let me turn on the lime spreader and go ahead and put the lime down. We should be fine here. We shouldn't have to refill this at all. We're not going to go through that much lime I don't think. I was just checking all the other fields as well and everything looks good. No weeds. We don't want to fertilize anything. All the other fields are set to go until harvest time, I do believe. So we just got to take care of this grass field by putting down lime and then fertilizing it. And then uh, we're going to make a road going from the fields on the other side over down towards our production buildings before we go ahead and get the case tractor out and the plow and we create a grass field over there. Now it's already grass, but... You get a much better yield by making a grass field rather than just mowing meadow grass. So that's what we're going to do over there. Uh, we do have a pile of silage bales on the other side of the river. And I think I am going to eventually bring those over to the farm and put those into bale storage rather than them have to sit out in the elements of the weather. And I think we'll keep those rather than bring it to the BGA. Originally when I did those, I was like, it'd be good just to get a little bit of money going. Uh, flowing from the BGA so I was thinking about bringing that silage on down to be processed but I think now we're going to go ahead and keep it and that way we have enough for the year throughout to feed the cows. I'm not worried about the feed. I think we got enough silage already but let's add a little bit more in there. Why not? Because at some point uh, the 20 cows that we, we purchased a while ago they've already had offspring once but in about four or five, five, six months somewhere in that area they're going to have offspring again. We're going to go from, you know, the currently amount of cows that we got, which is like 46. We're going to be up to like 60 and 70 and yeah. And, and you see how much we're feeding the cows already. So I want to make sure we got a good stockpile of feed going on for them. More is always better than less. Uh, we, can, we, can deal with, we can deal with more by, you know, go ahead and bring it to the BGA later on. You can't help yourself out when you got less uh, other than doing more work so yeah we're gonna bring those silos bills over put them in the storage make a road over there and then it's gonna be kind of hard to it's gonna be a weird shaped grass field but it's grass so it's gonna be just fine but there is like a a forest area which you can kind of see right there it's kind of uh, like right in the middle of that plot of land that we bought so it's gonna be a grass field on both sides it'll be fine uh, in the future of course we can go ahead and cut down more trees uh, speaking of trees, I did take a quick look and our stone pine trees are still little saplings up there on the hill. Meanwhile, the oak trees that we planted, those things have sprouted up real nicely and they're giving shade to the cows, the sheep, and also it'll look really good I think when fall comes when those uh, oak trees do change colors and gives us those lovely orange reds that they can. We'll see how it goes. Uh, we got plenty more oak trees. Actually, I forgot where I put those saplings. They're somewhere. It might be over by the workshop, but when we eventually get the planter again, which is the excavator and the planter that we need for it, we're going to plant some more oak trees. I think a couple more oak trees on the other side for the sheep would be good. And I may try to sneak into the cow pasture by opening up the gate and we'll put a, like a couple of oak trees like right in the middle of the pasture for them as well, rather than on the edges. Uh, just to give the cows a little bit more shade. I think the, they could use some... And also, uh, a couple for the chickens as well. We need to we need to spice up the chicken coop pen area a little bit. It's all just kind of bland, I think, with just the, just the pure dirt around them. So 
so I think putting a, like a little bit of grass in there with some flowers uh, maybe that would uh, help them get more insects in there that they can peck at uh, chickens do eat insects and such but yeah it doesn't quite count in game now does it because <laughs> we give them all that wonderful wonderful chicken food that we have to feed them but I think a little bit of grass and flowers in there would make it look a little bit better so that's what's kind of on the agenda going forward here while we wait for our fields to grow. And then, uh, of course, harvest time is not that far off. We are already in the month of May and harvest can begin. Is it next month already, actually? Do we actually have a crop that we can harvest in June? I can't remember. I, I can't keep track of the FS22 crop cycles. I I'm just not good at it. I don't know why. Uh, 17 and 19 farming simulators... Even in 19 with seasons and the, the geos that we could get for different maps and put them to any maps, which you can still kind of do here. I, I had no problem with it. For some reason in, in 22, I can't keep track of the different harvest seasons. I, I, I just can't do it. So I'll probably need some lime in the other fields. Of course, when we create the other field, we'll have to get some soil samples. Lime the field, fertilize it, all that jazz, the size we're doing here. But uh, definitely want to get this grass field up and going again. But by the end of May, we should have a true grass field on the other side as well. I'm hoping to get it plowed and the field kind of set. So I want to be using this again today, so I want to go ahead and just park that right, right there. Let's go grab the fertilizer spreader. JCB doing all the work. For now, anyways. I do love having this JCB finally. I've been uh, talking about it for ages. I think even going way back to no man's land. I was hinting like, hey, let's get the JCB. And everyone's like, yeah, that sounds like a great plan. Months later, we finally have it. Oh, that's right. 42 meter wide working width. And this should be all set for grass. Yep, we're all good. Spin this around here. It's kind of weird because uh, I don't want to say Solendro will be coming to an end soon, but I'm prepping for what series will be taking its place, and I'm still looking for a particular kind of map. Even in, I was looking for one even before I started Solendra, and one the, the map I'm looking for still hasn't come out. There's been a few others that have come out. I tested them. I'm like, oh, this is what I'm looking for, and yeah, the map just doesn't quite do it for me it may have issues or the layout just isn't quite right we all know that I mean there's tons of maps on the mod hub we all have our preferences been doing a little map hunting today just to kind of get things prepared and ready at least one thing Solendra has taught me is uh, probably horses are not the thing to do in FS22 on hard economy. Maybe on easy or normal, it might be better. Not too sure. I guess that's why many people really don't do horses, but I wanted to give it a go myself and it didn't quite work out. I think I'm just going to stick to chickens, sheep, and cattle. And definitely the cattle here, the moo cows, are going to be helping out the farm quite a bit. Although we got a ways to go. But I'm definitely not worried about the money situation. It's just, uh, yeah, the money is tight right now. But it's just going to get better as each month passes. We paid a little bit off the loan last episode, so that was nice. But we still got things to buy. Like, more land would be good. I think uh, just adding the grass field that we're like we're doing today, that grass field won't do us enough. We'll probably need another one. And then we'll just go from there. As for fields that have crops in them, I think we're, I think we're good where we are. We got enough 
I think we got enough land and fields to where I don't have to worry about having enough to feed all the animals. Actually, we probably got more than what we need. And also for the cotton as well. So we got plenty of grain grist. And we didn't have to give any to the sheep last year throughout the winter. But then again, that pen is starting to see some population into it. Starting with 10 sheep, we're up to 60. Alright, we are fertilized. So this field should be all set. Crop rotation really doesn't matter in the grass field because it's going to be grass, 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 grass. That's all it's going to show, but the, the, with the crop rotation, we do get 100%, 110%, sorry, uh, yield on this field. So, yeah, we're looking pretty good. We're looking at 108 out of 100. We just don't roll the field or mulch or anything like that, so we probably don't get the benefits there. Uh, so the JCB, we are done with for now. Let's go ahead and we'll grab... I uh, probably should turn off the engine. Don't need that running. Let's grab the Magnum. And we'll grab our plow. And we'll start creating a field after we get a road going from the other side down to our production buildings. That was the main reason of getting that field. I keep saying field, but it's actually just... A plot of land, isn't it? Uh, can I sneak out here? I know I can, but at this angle, can we? Am I going to get caught up? No, we, we made the turn. We're good. Over the bridge, and we'll figure out how to do this road. Even the oak trees over here on this riverside are looking good. I do like this oak tree in the middle right here. We got plenty of room to move around it, so I'm not worried about that getting in the way in the future. All right, let's go into construction mode. Oh yeah, for sale items, uh, nothing that we're looking for. All right here, and then spin around this way. ish all right so scroll on out here i'm trying to figure out how i want to do this road so you can see where we do meet up so let me just go ahead and start let's get the landscaping painting uh, i do believe that's going to be asphalt that we got here and let's make it the same size yeah it's got to be that size right there so it should be asphalt which it is so we're going to keep that road kind of in the same spot. In the future, we can always move the roads around. So what I think I want to do is just kind of have the road come along this side of the pond. And the question is, where do we actually own to? Uh, right there. Okay. So we'll just cut this road out to here like this. Not sure I like the corner here too much. So let's let's kind of smooth that out a little bit. Oh yeah, the bales. I kind of forgot about taking up the bales here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, this is dirt over here. All right. So just imagine the road coming through here. <laughs> I have to pick up those bales, and I think just having the road come along here, leave some space by the field so we don't get. I don't want to get too close. That way, if something were to happen to the truck and things were to get a little bit odd, we'd be fine. Um, yeah, should I make this all asphalt around here later, you know, in the future? Probably will. But now I can kind of see where the road's going to be. So I can bring the grass field, like, right up alongside here. So now i got a good start. A good idea of what we need to do here. All right, let's unfold the plow. And let me turn on to activate to create fields. All right, that should be on. I'll scroll back just a little bit more so I can make sure I can see the back of the implement. 
and let's drop it on down and just like every other field we're going to keep it some distance away from the road in the future we might need a bigger road never know so actually this grass field even though it's going to be oddly shaped and it may look kind of small in some areas I think it'll end up bigger than the one on the other side once you add both sides of the field And then we'll have to bring the case back in here later on to put the grass seed in. But that'll be after we get soil samples. Oh, there's a pile of logs over here you got to be careful of. So I will leave the pile of logs there. I don't think I got the mod that allows me to hide objects on the map activated. But for now, we will go around it. question is, do I want to do a grass field all the way around? I don't know. I'm trying to figure out where we own to. And I think I'm just going to leave it even with the grist mill. I'm not going to go up on the other side of the trees around that way, although I probably could. Yeah, let's swing it somewhere in here because I the property line is going to be somewhere along here. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to go up on the other on the left side of this forest area. It's not that wide, so I think for now we'll just leave it. I may change my mind once I get to the other side and start uh, making the field over there. For now, let's just go ahead and we'll do the field up like this. And actually, while I'm here, might as well finish off this little circle we got here. That we have to come back on down. Really glad you guys talked me into getting a plow like this. It just makes the job a lot easier compared to the 9 meter wide one I've was going to use that I've always used except for making big fields this uh, this is proper what what we need to be using yeah I'm not going to get all one more pass am I not quite And of course, taking soil samples will not take us too long with the mod soil sampler that we got. Probably need to take about three samples at most. Alright, lift that on up. And let's edge this side of the field. So, logging this hill up here is, of course, definitely an option for us. I don't see us logging it and creating more of a grass field up on the hill. I mean, we could. But I think it might be... I don't know how that would look at if we got rid of all the trees and this made it into a grass field completely across. When I first saw it, I'm like, yeah, we got to keep it a forest. But you know what? It's not as hilly as it originally looked. Okay, maybe on this end it does. It's starting to get kind of steep. Yeah, we got, we got plenty of land around here to work with anyways. So if we need more grass fields... The land's not that expensive. We're talking 80 grand. And there's plenty of land to purchase around here. I'm thinking we own probably like one third of the map right now. 
and that is going to be plenty of work for us throughout the year. So I don't want to expand too much. Like like on No Man's Land, we own we owned all the land uh, from the start. We didn't pay for it, and I think I end up farming like maybe just like on that even that map only like half of it. And it was getting to be a lot of work. But then again, we were doing stones on that one, which took a lot of time. <laughs> That's why we're not doing stones anymore. That's the only thing we got turned off is stones. Alright, I don't feel like I want to go any further, so we're going to turn here. At least now we got a solid road coming up through here. I know it was driving a few people insane that when I was coming on down through here not having a road. Of course, this road mainly is for the sawmill going up to, I don't know, should we call that like Lumberjack Hill? I guess going on up there and grabbing the the logs up there and we may need to decorate just a little bit more around here I originally said I didn't want to make like little villages and such and I still don't but I don't I won't mind putting down like a building here and there just for decorative purposes and I don't want to spread out my production buildings either. At least I don't think so. I like having all my production buildings in one area on this map. Having like its own industrial park, if you will. And I think we'll just shoot straight on across. I'll leave that little spot right there. I may actually uh, put dirt in that area right there and kind of leave it like a like maybe like a parking area. So when we are working over here, if we got more than one tractor over here, we got some place to park our tractors. It won't be on a field or in a grass field or in a meadow. It'll actually be in a park area. All right, now all I need to do is just uh, go around a few more times, and we got ourselves. A field and we'll grab the JCB we'll put the soil sampler on it and we'll go around and take some samples one thing I just remembered I wanted to bring up because I think I mentioned it last episode that we're making like three thousand dollars an hour from our um, solar panels on the sheds and the wind turbine now that was from East Vineland uh, here we're making maybe just over a thousand dollars an hour so I want to correct that because if we were making three thousand dollars an hour on all that such such and stuff, uh, yeah, the the loan interest would not be that big of a deal. <laughs> but yeah, we're just barely covering the loan interest. So yes, yeah, just over a thousand dollars an hour from that. I also just had to look at the calendar because I was like, I know there's something I can harvest in June. What is it? And it's barley. We can harvest barley in June. Now I don't remember if we planted it. In the early month or the later month so that all depends you know we may be harvesting in june may not be all depends on i don't remember when i planted that barley i want to say we planted the wheat and barley together so maybe not in june maybe in july but you know it's no big rush our combine will eat through all that rather quickly all right looks like two more passes here maybe And this field will be good to go. So the other thing I have to keep in mind as well is we got two items that we, well, one item we need to either lease or buy this year. And that'll be the header for harvesting potatoes. And I got to keep enough money to lease the cotton module harvester. Then, of course, that is for the cotton. Which, as we saw, selling that clothing the other day paid off really well. And it's going to do even better once the sheep can keep up with the amount of cotton that we're bringing in. 
Uh, nope, plow did not lower. There we go. Raise the plow. Make sure I turn off. Allow create fields. Turn that off because I don't want to create a field anywhere else. Bring the plow back. Let's grab the JCB, shall we? And we'll put the soil sampler on the front of the JCB. And we'll bring the lime spreader over also. But soil samples first. As long as we get the grass field planted in this month, that'd be good. That way I can start uh, germinating overnight. And I'm hoping to keep the grass fields out of sequence. I don't want to have both fields be ready at the same time. It would be kind of nice in some ways, I would think. But uh, just dividing up when we do the grass fields wouldn't be too bad. Let's park the case right... Well, might as well just park this right over here. Because I'm going to be planting the grass, like I said, this month. Alright, JCB. Not going to need the fertilizer spreader because when we plant the grass, it should put in the correct amount that it needs. Let's drop that off. Now spin around. Grab that. And the JCB is so quick, we're going to back up to the lime spreader. Um, if it's like only if it's below three quarters full, I think we'll put more lime. Yeah, we'll just put lime into it any anyways. Lime's not that expensive, and it's not like I won't ever use it again, right? Yeah, we're we're down more than that. So let's go ahead and open that up. Let's top this off because we're gonna need it all, I'm sure, because this will be the first time it's had lime on it. Alright, next thing we need is the map. And if I remember correctly, it ain't going to matter because this soil sampler takes such a wide sample area, I think it's going to cover the entire map. So let's come on down here. If I open the yeah, see, I can't open up that map because that stops it. Stops showing it. I think the square one's going to show me more. I think I'm far enough. So we'll just go ahead. And of course, we got a quick soil sampler. So. And soil sample already taken. And if I go to here, all right, so you can see that color there, that it's like a maroon color, dark red maroon, whatever you want to call it. You can see how big of an area we covered. So we'll come up here and grab another one. We're just crossing the line right there. That's where we grab the soil sample up to. Let's come over to here. And we'll just put that on the edge of the map, like that. And we'll grab that one there. Now it's even grabbing across the river into our other grass field and our sugar beet field over here. That's fine. We'll get updated samples and parts of those fields. And might as well go ahead and try to get as much as we can in the other fields because I'll keep those up to date for a longer period of time. 
All right, so pretty much around the corner. I could probably do one more sample, but I might take two. Maybe kind of hard to see in that bottom left-hand corner on that map that we're crossing the line right now. What we took a sample up to. And actually, I think we'll cover it all right there. Yeah, we got it all. So that's a weird looking grass field, I know, but uh, it'll do just fine. Uh, what button is it? Oh, I got to detach the lime spreader. There we go. Now I can hit Y to send off the soil samples. Can't do that with a spreader on the back because that is to change how the spreader works. Multiple buttons, you know. Um, do we already get the... Oh, it looks like we already got the samples in. Alright, that was rather quickly. Alright, we don't need the map anymore. Because we can easily see where we put the line down. Now, of course, you know, someone is going to say, I could have mowed the grass before we plowed it in and got some grass off of that, but... We did all that starting the series with every field that we created. Almost every field. I think, I think the last field or two I may have skipped on it. We got plenty of grass in storage for now. And I just didn't feel like cutting grass today, honestly. But um, in reality, I'm not sure a farmer would want to cut that grass either with all the, the weeds and all that kind of stuff that was in it. It may not be good for making silage or you know hay or anything like that. I guess it all depends on what type of weeds are actually in meadow grass in Farming Simulator, but yeah, we're, we're fine. We just skipped on mowing the grass. We would have got a good amount of bales. But I just want to make a true grass field and be all set with it. We'll get a better yield that way. I didn't even see how much it was for the soil samples because it happened so quick. I think... I, I saw it flash up there. Was it $600 for that? That's not too bad. And soil samples. Grass fields you have to do more often than not because you're harvesting like three times a year if you keep up with it. You can probably do it four times a year if you want to cut it, the grass at the early stages. And I'm going to assume someone's probably done a test by now. If mowing the grass four times a year compared to three times a year, do you end up with the same amount of liters off the field in a year? Or is it beneficial to get, you know, the grass to its full height and cut it three times at the full height? Or cut it four times at the earliest height that you're allowed to cut it at? I think I, I mentioned that before. I, probably in every series I mentioned it when we do grass fields, right? I kind of bring that subject up. Because some people say, oh, your grass field's ready to, to be harvested. Why aren't you cutting it? It's like, well, it's not at the highest stage that it can be. I'd just rather cut it three times a year because that's a lot of harvesting grass doing it four times a year in a field. And the more grass fields you have, that's more cutting. Probably should do the same thing. Let me spin around and get this side of the field done. The only thing with precision farming is try not to leave small little slivers in between where you've gone because the sensors are not going to see those little slivers that you missed. It's going to detect, you know, lime on either side or fertilizer whatever you're putting down. So that's why I'm overlapping a little bit here on the right and not the left. I want to make sure I get full coverage on that side. So like that little spot right there on the right hand side, I can drive over that and it will not put lime down, I do not believe. Unless I turn off, uh, what's it, what's it going to say? Uh, deactivate automatic application rate. If I turn that off, it'll just throw down lime there at the standard in-game rate. So like right now, the sensors, even though we don't have them on the tractor, 
are sensing that the line value or, or pH value in this part of the field is fine. So it's not actually spreading down any line. And I don't think it's going to spread it over here. Nope. It'll take a second for it to kick in here, but it should cover it all. So I need to bring the bolter over, grab those silage bales, put those in the, the bale storage. As for the bales, we're doing fine on all of them. Straw, conditioned grass, silage, and hay. We're, we got a good supply going. It would not be a good supply though if we had a full sheep pen and cow pasture. Not going through as much lime as I thought I was going to doing this field. Looks like there's actually some pH value in the soil already. It's not all the way down at zero. I don't know if it's because we didn't cut the grass before we plowed. And the grass somehow puts some pH value back into the ground. But either way, uh, we're getting the levels to where it needs to be. And I'm not going to have to refill. I have seen farmers, when they lime the fields around here, and depending on how windy the day is it's kind of interesting to see how it how it's done of course on a really windy day they don't they won't do it because lime will just get thrown everywhere and probably not where it needs to be applied to but i've seen them uh, do it once before on a very very calm static day if you will and the hue of this white haze over the field <laughs> definitely want to be inside of a cab of a tractor when doing lime spreading like that. Well, that was a uh, that was pretty good. Uh, two thirds of the Bredel spreader for lime. So now the only thing that remains is to go ahead and put the grass seed into, into the ground. For a second there, I was like, I missed a big spot down there. How did I miss the spot down there? That's the pile of logs. I thought it was actually part of the field, but that's the pile of logs. Let's go ahead and park this up, and I think what we're going to do to wrap up the episode is we're going to go over to the chicken pen and actually give them some foliage so it's not just all mud and dirt around there. as I run the Breedle Spreader into a stone wall. Let me go ahead and park this Lime Spreader up because we're done with that for the year, I would think. And then also, let's drop off the Soil Sampler. Sneak that in right there, be good. And I'm actually going to back up the JCB over by the pressure washer. Probably want to get that lime off the tractor. Don't want that sitting on there for too long. Let me do that now while I'm thinking about it. If I can jump over the wall there. I can imagine actually spraying the lime with a pressure washer that at the beginning it the lime would just absorb the water and just start like clumping up in areas. I 
I say that looks good enough. Now let's go over and say hello to the chickens. Currently just 11. 10 hens, 1 rooster. But next month we'll have 20 hens and a rooster. Yeah, definitely getting some trees, some oak trees over here would be good. Uh, we actually got some slight production of some eggs. Alright, so construction mode. Um, landscaping, painting. Uh, I don't know if we want, not forest ground, we don't want this pure grass. Do we have other options here? Okay, so not, not much other options. So I think what we need to do is, uh, we'll scroll in a little bit. And we'll make that just a little bit bigger, like maybe that. We don't want it all just like 100% pure grass. So we're just going to like... Uh, maybe not where I drive through, but just wiggle the mouse around like that. I don't know how map makers do it, but that's the way I would make it kind of spotty. All right, then of course we go into plants. Now of course we got different. We got metal. And we got flowers. Otherwise, bushes. I don't think we really want, but we're gonna start off with metal grass. And just do kind of the same thing. Actually, let's make that list a little bit bigger. Okay, maybe not that big. And just scatter it around like that. And then we will go ahead and just throw in a... There's different types of flowers here and there to make it look a little bit like that. And then let's go back to the painting. Uh, and then dirt. And we'll go ahead and clear out the feed trough area. And probably as well where the eggs spawn because if pallets are there all the time grass is not going to grow that well underneath them and then what i want to do of course is let's make that a little bit eh, yeah we'll make it that big and this kind of come out like that because our tractors are going to come in there and just kind of meet up with that, I think. Because that is the road right here to our silo. And I think that's where we're going to leave it. And I'm going to put a little bit more grass in here. And probably... Because we're not coming in here that much. So like a little bit of grass will grow where the wheels don't go. Something like that. All right, let's go down to ground level and see what we got here. So it looks a little spotty now, which is good. Just the way I kind of wanted it. Now we just need to get some trees in here. Um, I don't know if I can get the excavator in here. I don't know if the excavator will go up and over the fence, but we'll give it a try next time we lease it and uh, we can plant some more oak trees into here at some point, but it'll be a while. Um, we got other ways to spend the money, although getting some more oak trees down would be kind of cool. Uh, these trees grew rather quickly, other than the stone pines, which um, haven't done anything at all yet, <laughs> but we'll wait and see. But uh, yeah, these give out some nice little shade, and yeah, the I, I don't know, are these at max height now, 17.1? They make it up to 20-something, maybe like 25, uh, but they did, they did grow tall enough, I think, to get, so we don't have like the, the limbs or the tree hanging over the road, so I don't see our equipment running into it too often. Or getting hung up so that looks rather nicely uh, i have noticed with the the stone fence mod um that we use actually this is the stone gate i believe from elk mountain modding yeah the there's like clips right here i can't walk through them ghost clips if you will hidden collisions so if you happen to get stuck going around a corner on these stone fences um the, i think like i said i think the gate is from elk mountain modding uh yeah, I'm not actually I'm not sure if it's from Elk Mountain Modding. Can't remember. I want to say it is, but maybe it's not. 
I don't, I don't know. Um, but yeah, if you are using those gates, by the way, and you know, there are some hidden collisions here. So just be uh, careful of that. But anyways, uh, we got our grass fields taken care of. Mostly, we just got to go ahead and, and plant the next one. And we'll probably start the episode, next episode, with that. I'll be finishing up in the case. And then we're pretty much done for May. Uh, the only thing I may need to do is... I didn't check on the sawmill. I'm not worried about the wood being run out. I'm worried about the stockpile at the sawmill. And we're doing fine, apparently. Uh, wood chips will have to take care of that shortly. We're still making bread off the little bit of uh, flour that we had. But it does take a while. Uh, <laughs> but that's not, that's not my concern. Oh yeah, I should maybe think about bringing some corn over to make some corn flour. And then make some more bread. Because I don't need that much corn, I don't think. Uh, we do use the corn, of course, to feed the chickens. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But anywho, that's going to do for today, guys. Hopefully you guys did enjoy the episode. I do appreciate you watching. As always, I'll catch you again right here in Hinterland. But until then... Have a good one.